the baby's name started up a dispute online. Here in China, people are happy to welcome new things. You know, Trump once again came top of the chart on Weibo. The hashtag Trump Meltdown went viral. Every day, Americans are still losing their lives, and we're still seeing more cases every day. Don't ask me. Ask China that question, okay? When you ask them that question, you may get a very unusual answer. Yes, behind you, please. Sir, why are you saying that to me specifically? I'm telling you, I'm not saying it specifically to anybody. I'm saying it to anybody that would ask a nasty question That's like that. That's not a nasty please question. Please go ahead. Why does it matter? When okay. Uh, anybody else? Please go ahead in the back, please. I have two questions. No, it's okay. But we'll you go pointed to me. I did, and you didn't respond, and now I'm calling on Sorry, I just the young lady in the back, please. I just wanted to let my colleague finish, okay. but can I ask you Ladies and gentlemen, please? thank you very much. Appreciate but it. Thank you very much. I'd say that you are a very terrible reporter. Why ask China for everything? Leave us out of the conversations. Anyway, that's our response. Enough about that. Papi Jian, a famous blogger in China, have recently given birth to a child. Congratulations. You're nothing too special. But the fact that the baby's name follows the father stirred up a dispute online. She was criticized by a group of extreme feminists who posted on her page saying something like, as someone who became famous with a public image of being strong and an independent woman, it's ironic to name the baby after the father. Since it was trending at the time, these comments drew the attention of the wider public. As expected, people are genuinely amazed that someone can be criticized by such a thing. It's her own business, whatever she likes to name her child. How can anyone be bothered with this? Instead of the hundreds of other topics one can be concerned with, such as eradicating poverty, getting a fair payment, unemployment, etc. This week, we're debating about how to name a child who has nothing to do with us. Wonderful. You know, with the social norm of the woman changing their surname after they get married, you think this kind of debate will happen somewhere in Europe. But I guess if we had accomplished the women's liberations back in the 50s, and ever since ensured that women would have received the same salary as men when doing the same job, have a similar promotion opportunities and also provisional of healthcare, we can try to be the first to settle this debate. Leave the mothers alone. It's not anyone else's business. Or maybe let the child choose for once. And I'm eager to see what is your options in the coming years. The recent spike of discussions on new lifestyles had created an internet trend that brought more and more live streaming shows to center their content around selling products. I mean, yes, there has been quite a lot of that in the past years. Many popular live streamers and vloggers had added advertisements to their content, either by subtly wearing merchandise or downright promoting their sponsors in their programs. At least, we're not doing that yet. With an example being that famous young man Li Jiaqi selling lipsticks. But things slowly changed. During the lockdown weeks ago, this new way of selling became extremely popular as several national TV hosts took on the trend. And during their broadcasts, these well-known individuals started to sell vegetables, combs, nuts, all kinds of stuff, mainly from Wuhan to help regions that were hit badly by the lockdown. Did you buy anything? Uh, a socket of apples and pears. The broadcast channeled a total transactional value of more than 520 million yuan, and that's 74 billion dollars. Wow. A great chance to help by simple clicks on a screen. And based on this idea, live streams are a tool not just to show off one's beauty, but also as a means to earn money. It is now an efficient medium for promotions and advertisements alike. And there is really something for everyone so long as they have a smartphone or a computer. Then we have this very eye-catching individual, Dong Mingzhu, the chairwoman of Geli, Gri, one of the biggest electrical appliance sellers in China. Years ago, she began to use herself as the face for her company, and now she's also going live and sales went over 100 million in just half an hour. Amazing. And things don't just stop here. Since most people are bored during quarantine and cinemas were closed, you can watch a film online. This is not just like watching on Netflix, but you can actually pay for a ticket and invite a friend or two to join the room with you. 
So you'll be sharing one screen and chat amongst yourselves as the film is playing. If you want to test out a new car, you can see the entire inner decoration on live stream too. If you're a fan of theater or concert, I don't know who you are, but just follow the account of those big performing centers and watch the shows online with the additional bonus of backstage footage. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. This is the kind of live streaming we're talking about here in China. And as it is, physical isolation means nothing when you have a good signal. But buying something online is different when you received it. You have to collect the parcel. And interestingly, we're also talking about lockers this week. As life goes on, we all do a lot of shopping. Nowadays, most people in China use online shopping for everything. And I mean everything. From luxury cars to brand new houses to everyday groceries. But due to the pandemic, with all the social distancing and the extra precautions communities are taking, these parcels cannot be delivered to your doorstep. Here is when the lockers come in handy. They're called Feng Chao. Mm, I heard of that. And those lockers originally were placed in residences as a self-service parcel storage system. So when your parcel arrived and you're not home, the delivery man could lock the parcel inside for you to collect later. So there's no more, I left it in your garage, or go and knock on the strangers in the next door. Here's how it works. <laughs> Convenient, isn't it? But how would you feel when you are forced to pay a small fee to take a parcel out if you've left it in there for more than 12 hours? Given that the delivery guy also has to pay for its usage, then win-win strategy for the company finally made some residents unhappy. And collectively, they decided to write a public letter to condemn the company's decision. They were very clear in stating, you didn't say it was not free when you first introduced the lockers. You can't force us to pay. And they gathered a lot of support on Weibo. After publishing pages of detailed analysis on whether the company has the right to charge money, individuals started to raise concerns with a broader yet more serious questions. Was the pace of changing in modern China we practically have a brand new service created every three to six months. Every day is a new day. Combining all the latest technologies and internet sharing principles to surpass its predecessors. How do we make sure that the startups are operating on the right tracks instead of seeking illegal benefits? Once the lifestyle of a generation changed, protective measures will also have to be innovated to keep up with the test of time. Fortunately, here in China, people are happy to welcome new things and adapt to them very quickly. Why fear facing problems when you can just work on it? All you need to do is just give a try. And that's all for today's Red Hot China, and please join us next week. See you next time.